Am I sitting here, yeah, am I? Yeah, you're sitting there. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a bit, bit, bit weird. So, so I'm looking at this? Yeah, you're just looking straight down there. I can see your face. It's oh, like uncanny. It's, it's a bit weird for me getting interviewed by you. <laughs> what part of Ireland are you from, first of all? Donegal. As long as it's not Munster, that's all right. <laughs> Don't want you to electrocute me. You can't go there, can you? Yeah. He turned and looked at the players and we were expecting the same old. The doors open and preceding the Queen and her entourage is all the corgis. And we said, well, we'll have the bad news. Hi, I'm Neil Back, played for England and won 66 caps, won a little World Cup in 2003. Yeah, okay. The 2003 World Cup, um, the team that Clive Woodward brought together, very cool, mentally tough guy. So I felt 100% confident that we could go into the World Cup and win seven out of seven. And that's what we did. Throughout the World Cup, halfway through, we had a team meeting and Clive Woodward come into the room and sat us all down and said, I've got some good news and some bad news. What do you want to hear? And we said, well, we'll have the bad news. And he said, the bad news is we've got an injury to Kieran Bracken. So we're going to have to bring Austin Healy out. So we thought, oh my God. And the good news is Austin's on his way. He can't stay in our hotel and Kieran's okay now. So he won't be joining us. And the whole room went up. Yes! So, unlucky on Austin, but that, that's the sort of banter we had when you could laugh and, and sort of joke about things. <laughs> when we turned up at the stadium, something that I'll always remember Martin Johnson, England captain, Lions England, Esther Tigers captain, won everything, and he always used to as he led the team out onto the pitch with Leicester, England, all the Lions. He used to turn round before he went out into the stadium and say a few last words to the players. At the World Cup, leading us out into the Telstra Stadium, into that cauldron, he turned and looked at the players and we were expecting the same old you know, positive message, a few w meaningful words, a, a rally or a cry, you know, some emotion. And he turned and looked at us and didn't say a word and, and walked out onto the field. And this was unusual. So I remember thinking at the time, is John all right? A couple of weeks later, I asked him why. And this was really poignant. He said, I looked around, I turned around and looked into everyone's eyes and knew we were ready. I didn't have to say anything. By saying nothing, that jailed us all and we followed. We play well, second half, at that stage it was, it was comedy because as a squad, we all gathered together as a group and we were looking into each other's eyes. A few people were saying a few words. John A was sort of managing it with his brows. And Clive, and then Phil Larder, our defence coach, and Adi Robertson come over because they felt they needed to say something. And basically, each one of them at, at different times said, don't give away penalties, play in their half, don't get yellow carded. And we're all looking around at ourselves and basically saying, no shit, Sherlock. You're 38 metres out, you've got a minute 10 on the clock, it's 17 all, Dorsey's at the base, Everyone sees Johnny in the pocket. Dorse is looking to pass Australia. Everyone's expecting potential drop goal opportunity. And Dorse dummies and goes and makes a, a break about 15 metres. Gets tackled, snagged. I peer at scrum half. I see Johnny again in the pocket, a lot ne nearer the sticks now, of course. And I'm there ready to pass. And the stadium lights are then blocked out by Jono lumbering up. So I pass it to Jono and everyone says he made three or four metres. 
He made about three inches, but what it did critically, and this is what our team was all about, is getting the right people into the right places. So Dorse recycled himself to number nine. He was the best passer of the ball on the field that day. Johnny in the pocket, they were miles offside. We were never gonna get a penalty off Andre Watson in the last minute of the World Cup, extra time. So this was it. Dors passes, Johnny catches, bangs it over his, his left foot. And guess what? No one celebrates we've won the World Cup. We had 22 seconds to deny Australia getting another penalty or another score. No one celebrates success or winning the World Cup until Andre Watson blows his whistle, so it's all over. Then we go mental, <laughs> as you would. And all that sacrifice has been worthwhile. This is the World Cup, we were world champions for the next four years. No one could ever take that away from us. And you've been a world, you're a world champion for the rest of your life. Uh, it really hit home what we'd achieved when we flew home and arrived at Heathrow Stadium at half five on Tuesday morning and there was 25,000 fans waiting for us. And that's the first time really it hit home the impact we'd had back home. Lots of stories, the bus tour around London, a million people, a visit to the palace. Halfway around London, Lewis Moody decides that he needs to go to the toilet. So Jason Leonard, 114 kappa for England suggests that he goes to the toilet on the bus. Jay said, oh, just pee in this. So he hands him a champagne bottle. So Mudos being like a dull back rower, starts peeing in this champagne bottle, trying to get it in a champagne bottle. So obviously it spills when we go around a corner, it spills all over Lewis Moody's legs. So he's basically peed on himself. And he looks at me and says, Baki, do you think I can meet the Queen looking like this? I said, well, just stick it over, your leg over the side of the bus. So here's Lewis going along with his leg outside of the bus. Anyway, by the time we get to Buckingham Palace, it, it dried off. We go into Buckingham Palace, lots of pleasantry, lots of dignitaries there. It's fantastic, we're about to meet the Queen. Clive is ar arranged us, he's in a big horseshoe. He's at the front. There's a big wooden door over there, a big brass handle on it. The other side was the Queen. The doors open, bang, this big brass handle bangs the door. And preceding the Queen and her entourage is all the corgis. So they go straight to Lewis Moody, right? And they're humping his leg, literally, as the Queen walks in. And Lewis is going to me, what, what shall I do, what shall I do? And I'm looking at him thinking, like, the Queen overhears him, she's got a little clutch back, and she said, kick, kick him in the balls. So Lewis, you don't need to tell him twice, so he's literally kicks the dog, one of his corgis across the room, bashes him, and you can hear the thud. Boom. Like this, I thought, you're dead, you're gonna be shot. She said, you nincompoop. I said, kick his balls, not in the balls. <laughs> Those guys that we went through that, you know, five, six, seven years with, you just have to look into the eyes and we know, you know the good times and the bad times, but that time when we became world champions.